Be careful when you bench a Pokemon because Zoroark will strike. Alright. Today we take control with Zoro Wark, we have a great combo And if you still don't know, prepare to be smacked off your troll Your setup is nice, but we use Mind Jack Those bash Pokemon filled up our attack And if that wasn't enough, we interact with foul play We steal your moves just like that Don't try to hide, drop a will, use Berserk and then you die It is no lie, kind of overpowered with magma space So say goodbye, look at this Deck shine. I've got drop by GX in my deck, yo. Zoro work two in my deck, yo. I've got drop by GX in my deck, yo. Zoro work break in my deck, yo. And it wrecks everyone, it wrecks everyone, oh. What's up, YouTube? It's Zandos TCG here, and welcome to episode 124, where we'll be taking a closer look at the Zoroark Drumpa GX. This deck did incredibly well last weekend at Mexico, but first, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more great Pokemon TCG content like this. And uh, also stick around till the end because I'm gonna talk about Marshadow GX and Muck, actually, Alolan Muck GX later. But first, let's check out the deck. Alright, first up, Drumpa GX is our main attacker. Drumpa GX is one of those GXs that already saw a lot of tournament success and is often paired with Garbodor and a deck uh, as a quick powerful attacker in combination with Team Magma's secret base. Today we scrap the Garbodor line and add in Zoroark instead. First up, we check out Drumpa GX. It has 180 HP, which is an awesome amount for a basic GX uh, Pokemon and uh, will only go down easily uh, to things that can one-shot it or uh, if they are a fighting type because that's its main weakness. Cards like Lycanroc GX or Zygarde EX can definitely one-shot this guy. Or maybe the new Marshadow GX, which I'm gonna talk about in Poke News at the end of the video. But yeah, I guess everyone has their weakness, right? The retreat cost of 2 is average and it's quite easy to get out uh, the active position with Floatstone and a DCE. Yeah, that is uh, the options I can think of. Also Escape Rope, Switch or Olympia can definitely get him out of the active position. But we are not going to run uh, Escape Rope or uh, Olympia or any for that uh, Switch for that matter because we have the ability of Zoroark Stand In, which I'm going to review in a second. Let's check out Drop a GX's attacks first. For a colorless energy, you can use Richer's Edge to deal 20 damage and discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. That side effect is really great against opposing Pokemon with double colorless energy, rainbow energy, double dragon energy, or even uh, yeah, the occasion of uh, running into a splash energy in Greninja decks. A lot of top decks in the current format run some sort of special energy, so it's definitely not a bad uh, side effect on the attack. But the second attack is what everyone is talking about. For three colorless energies, meaning a basic energy and a DCE, we deal 80 damage. Kind of average, right? But the side effect is where the money is at. Uh, it states that if one of your bench Pokemon has any damage counters on them, that's, uh, it's, if it's only one, that also counts, so that is awesome, then it deals 150 damage instead. Holy macaroni, that is a ton of damage for two energy attachments, aka a DCE and a basic. With a choice band, we add that damage up to 180, enough to knock out almost any basic EX or GX in the current format. And that is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Like, Tapu Lele GX has 170 HP, gets one shot at Tapu. Pupulu, one shot at Volcanian EX, one shot at all thanks to that choice band. So Drumpa GX is definitely a powerhouse. When you think about it, uh, with uh, Team Magma Secret Base, the requirement is uh, yeah easy as pie to get those damage counters on one of our bench Pokemon. Keep in mind that when the rotation comes, people will have to resort to another method, like Rainbow Energy, for example, to get that requirement. Yeah, <laughs> in the active uh, yeah mindset, because without Team Magma Secret Base, we will not be able to put damage counters on our bench. Pokemon quite as easily so uh, but uh, nowadays it is still legal so uh, in this deck uh, with Drumpa GX and Zoroark you only need four DCEs and a couple of energies I'd say uh, run around six or seven darkness energies I'll talk about all the rest of the cards in a second but first let's check out the GX move of Drumpa GX Big Wheel GX for a single colorless energy, we shuffle our hand into our deck and then draw a whopping 10 cards. You might say, meh, that's only the GX move of the game and I don't want to waste my GX move on that because most of the time they will uh, yeah, play an end to disrupt our uh, yeah, GX move in one shot. 
uh, but in other situations it's definitely a great option let's say you have to uh, top deck or you uh, draw dead well for a single energy you can get back an entire hand and get back into the game like that big wheel GX can be a savior in situations like that okay so uh, that is the first card of the deck definitely run two or maybe even three copies of Drumpa GX in your deck you can add in a third one, uh, yeah, but remember running two is definitely efficient because we have other uh, efficient attackers like Zoroark. And Zoroark has to evolve from the little Zorowa, uh, which, uh, yeah, is, uh, the options are available to us. We have two of them, both in the breakthrough set. The first one is Zorowa with whiny voice. The attack lets you choose a random card from your opponent's hand and your opponent shows that card and shuffles it back into his or her deck. Imagine when you are, uh, end your opponent to one card and then uh, yeah they happen to top deck a sycamore or a vs seeker then with whiny voice boom yeah they have to shuffle it back in the deck and they have to top deck so that can be a fun little situation but I am more fan of the uh, Zorowa with Moonless Madness. This Zorowa automatically confuses the opponent's active Pokemon and that, ladies and gentlemen, can sometimes win you games and situations where the opponent has no chance of retreating and they have a 50% ch uh, chance of hitting themselves, that can save you a turn. So I would definitely run four copies of that Zorowa in your deck. You can also uh, slice it up to two of this Zorowa and the one with whiny voice, but it's all a personal preference, of course. Next up, the Badass as itself Zora Wark. Uh, it also has been around in a lot of decks and this time around with Guardians Rising being illegal the choice ban adds that damage up even further. It has 100 HP which is kind of on the low side for a stage 1 but that doesn't even matter when you have an amazing ability and an awesome attack. The ability stand in makes it so good and that, that, may, that makes it actually that you can switch every turn because that ability is basically a free switch to put Zoroark on the active position. Really useful, that ability stand in means that if you activate the ability Zoroark goes to the active position. If you have a floatstone attached to your Zoroark that is even better, with that nothing can get stuck in the active position anymore. It also helps if uh, your opponent Lysanders out something that you don't want. Yeah, uh, yeah, the attack Mind Jack is a really, really powerful attack for a single DCE attachment. It deals 10 damage plus 30 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So that can add up to a ton of damage considering the fact we have Choice Band at our disposal. So Zoroark can be a sweeping monster indeed. And as a bonus, it has a nice resistance to Psychic, which helps it out a lot against the Garbodor matchup. I would run 3 to 4 Zoroarks in your deck. And uh, if the regular Zoroark wasn't enough already, we run two, uh, yeah, definitely run at least two Zoroark breaks. There's nothing much, uh, yeah, more that I can say about this card that hasn't been said already. It's a wonderful break card that gives Zoroark 40 extra HP, and uh, which helps it out a lot against, uh, yeah, a certain Pokemon that can one-shot it. Maybe the Tapu Koko deals 130 damage. Well, they cannot one-shot the Zoroark break. So that is definitely awesome. Also, uh, the attack foul play is where the, the money's at. That is just such a powerful attack. It lets you choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and uh, use it as this attack. You uh, don't even need the necessary energies. You can just, just pick one attack and boom, you can use it for uh, yeah this attack. Foul play, really, really powerful attack. It's kind of overpowered since uh, yeah you don't need the necessary energies. But as a downside, if you use a, a, a move like a GX move for say, they... Uh, that counts as your GX move for the game. So uh, also we can knock certain Pokemon out. Let's say you're facing Garbodor and well, you can use Trash Challenge on themselves, which is awesome. Blizzard Burn, yeah, that is also possible. If you're facing Lapras, you can use Blizzard Burn with Choice Band, you knock them out. So things are going really well. Another example, Giga Hammer of Metagross deals 150 damage. You can also use that attack. So a lot of versatility with Zoroark Break. All is possible with that awesome Break card. And uh, as mentioned, you can use the GX moves, but remember, Remember, you can only use one GX move per game. If you steal the uh, opponent's GX move, well, that counts as your GX move. Next up on the deck list, I would run one. Two, two copies of the promo Tapu Koko. This card is way too good not to be used in a deck that uses double carless energies. It has free retreat and deals 20 damage to everything on the opponent's field for a DCE. Now that is good. Definitely when uh, that is your starting Pokemon. 
because it has free retreat and also can get the early damage spread and the, yeah, the early game and that way we can finish things off uh, with our draw by GX or even our Zoroark. So yeah, keep in mind that all our Pokemon are weak to fighting. So that is the only main weakness I see for the deck at the moment. But other than that, we have great matchups across the board. Okay, let's check out some more Pokemon we would include in a deck like this. Next up, Oranguru from the Sun and Moon set. This card is great and lets you draw cards until you have 3 in the hand every turn. This might not seem much, but in the late game this definitely saves you uh, against those powerful ends. And uh, with 4 Ultra Balls in the deck we can definitely uh, limit our hand size to a low amount. That way we can draw more with the Oranguru. Most people are afraid to put it in the list because it can get stuck in the active position. But with Zoroark the stand-in ability that will definitely save us turn after turn. Unless they play Hex Maniac of course, then they... Uh, yeah, it's basically stuck, but it also has a neat attack psychic dealing 60 damage uh, Yeah, plus more for uh, every uh, energy on the opponent's active Pokemon So uh, we can definitely uh, rack up some damage with Oranguru as well. The next up uh, Yeah, Pokemon I would include is the Oricorio Oracorio with Supernatural Dance. This is basically a Vespiquen tech because uh, yeah we can kind of struggle against Vespiquen. What with that Oracorio we can single-handedly destroy Vespiquen uh, and, and all their tracks because for uh, yeah, a card as energy we drop one damage counter on the opponent's field wherever we like for every Pokemon in our opponent's discard pile. And that can add up to a lot of sniping capabilities in the late game getting you the last prize cards or uh, pretty much obliterating Vespiquen. And the last Pokemon I'd include our Shaman EX and Tapu Lele GX. You know we need consistency and those Pokemon give it to us. We have one Shaman EX. I would definitely not run two of them because it has a low amount of HP and if they knock it out they get two prize cards. So yeah. But then again it's the more powerful uh, yeah, draw support for uh, when you need those cards and you have a slow start. Because we do run four DCEs and those won't always show their face on the right time. You can also run Energy Lotto to prevent that but yeah running Sh shaman is definitely better when that way we discard cards in the hand use shaman and draw into the card that we need that wonderful ability is definitely awesome then we have Tapu Lele GX. This guy is awesome. Wonder Tech is the best ability in the format at the moment because we can search out a supporter of our choice. Think about things that we really need at a certain time. Lysander, Sycamore, Hex Maniac, yeah, I don't even need to uh, mention more of them. Maybe uh, you can run Bridget and get that out as well. So definitely a great uh, inclusion here. I would run two Tapu Lele GXs. And that's it for the Pokemon. Now let's uh, check out some trainer cards. Uh, first up is the Stadium of Choice. You have two options here. We can run the Team Magma Secret Base or the Ultra of the Moon. I would say Team Magma Secret Base is a must when playing Drumpa GX. That way we can get out the full potential of this unstoppable GX Pokemon. If you don't have it, uh, Ultra of the Moon works just fine and brings some, some variety to our deck because we do run Darkness Energies, so we have free retreat once we have a Darkness Energy attached to a Pokemon, which is really great to get out of the active position because we do know sometimes abilities are shut down, Stand In will not work and Field Blower gets rid of our Float Stones. So there's that. For the item cards, we are not gonna run a lot since Garbodor is uh, still going strong in the format, racking up a ton of tournaments. We do run 4 Ultra Ball to search out the Pokemon we want, 4 VS Seekers to reuse all the wonderful supporters in our deck, uh, which I'll feature up next actually. Uh, 1 Special Charge uh, to recover our double cards energies because yeah, we kind of need them, all our Pokemon needed to attack and uh, yeah, with uh, Enhanced Hammer being around and a lot of disruption going on with Crushing Hammer and stuff, we definitely need to have our DCEs back in the deck. Uh, one or two Rescue Stretchers, just to get back a Pokemon that we lost through the early game of Sycamore or that has been knocked out. We can get back everything we want in the right situation. You need the Shaman, get it out of the discard. You need an Oranguru, get it out of the discard. You want Zoroark, break at the right time, get it out of the discard. So versatility is, uh, so much versatility is in the deck here. And then to finish off for the items, I would definitely run three Choice Bands and two Float Stones. The uh, Choice Bands are uh, yeah, definitely <laughs> something you will include, otherwise you don't hit the numbers to one-shot EXs or GXs. Definitely an awesome card in the format right now. 
The two flow stones are there for free retreat and brings you, yeah, the versatility. If you attach it to Zoroark, you can always get out of the active position, as explained before. But uh, be careful of the field blower though, so uh, yeah, at the right time, attach that flow stone. Now to the supporters of the deck. We run 4 Sycamores. This is the best and most aggressive draw supporter in the entire game at the moment. And with all the recovery we, ha we have in the deck, it's definitely nice to include 4 copies. 2 Lysander to target a Pokemon. Uh, yeah, just think about it. We can leave them stuck in the active position at bad times, or just target something and one-shot it with Zoroark Break, Zoroark or whatever the hell we like. Uh, one Bridget uh, and one Pokemon Fan Club just to start off with it. Let's say we start off, we have Ultra Ball, we use Tapu Lele, get out one of these uh, in a certain situation. Remember that Pokemon Fan Club gets two Pokemon in the hand while Bridget banishes three of them straight from the deck. The good thing about Fan Club is that it can uh, get out Shaman EX that we can use the ability because we put them in the hand. That way we can drop them on the bench and activate the ability of Shaman EX. Next up is three copies of N. There is also a very powerful supporter, not only in the early game to get you a fresh hand of 6, but in the late game as well to get your opponent to a low hand size. And if they have a low hand size, you actually uh, win yourself some awesome games and uh, you can definitely get a comeback. Uh, next up, I would include one Hex Maniac. I cannot stress enough how powerful this card is when played at the correct time. With Tapu Lele by our size, we can definitely get it at the right time. Just think about Oh, you start the game off and you see an alone Eevee. Well, not uh, anything to worry about because we can just use our Tapu Lele, get Hex Maniac turn 1 and boom, that Eevee will definitely not evolve and we can dunk it later on. <laughs> that is awesome. Also, Hex Maniac is really powerful against Volcanion EX, the Sijuai GX or even Greninja Break. Stopping the abilities from working is definitely game breaking. And the last two cards on my list are one Professor Kukui and one Teammate. This is definitely uh, an inclusion here because Kukui can get you that extra 20 damage you need to one hit KO a Pokemon. Think about Sylveon GX or Espeon GX with 200 HP. Well, if Drompa GX has a Choice Band attached and we use Professor Kukui, boom, suddenly we one-shot those high HP Pokemon. It's also uh, yeah, nice that you can get two cards as well with that supporter. Drawing two cards is really good and also works really well with Zoroark to boost that attack damage. Let's say you need Kukui, Pan, and then you use uh, the foul play on an attack that barely not one-shots. Well, now it does. <laughs> Lastly, one teammate. Uh, sometimes we get knocked out and it's kind of hard to come back uh, without teammates. And uh, the ability of Tapu Lele, of course, or the, yeah, getting it through VS Seeker will definitely get you two cards from the deck that we want after an, uh, an opponent knocked our active Pokemon out. Ideal to get yourself the recovery you want, get out your double cardless energy, your choice band, your needed Zoroark break or anything for that matter. Also, yeah, <laughs> the thing you might need just to one shot the opponent, so uh, teammates definitely think about that card. And that's it for another deck analysis. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, you learned a lot because this deck is really doing well at the moment. And uh, yeah, just think about this deck. It uses stage one, so uh, Jolteon cannot, Jolteon EX cannot get in the way. It uses uh, the basics, so Glaceon cannot get in the way. So it's a perfectly balanced deck. And uh, def definitely test it out for yourself and let me know how it does in the comment section below. Now let us continue on with the great news here. Okay, news. There is a lot I want to talk about in this video. Uh, cards I haven't uh, talked about before. And I'm gonna start off with some Sun and Moon 3 scans of Burning Shadows coming to us on the 4th of August. We have Plumeria from the Sun and Moon 3 set, of course. It states it's a supporter card, which is nice. It's the uh, one of the villains of the Sun and Moon games. Uh, we discard two cards from our hand in order to play this card. Yeah, kind of neat. Uh, the, the, the synergy I see here is discarding a Darkrai GX together with an energy. That way it can come back from the desk, discard pile as quickly as possible because it has that ability, that Darkrai GX, to get out of the discard and getting an energy in the process. Uh, then we discard one uh, yeah, energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon with that uh, supporter. So we discard two cards from the hand and then we have the ability to discard one energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So basically a Team Flare Grunt on steroids because we can choose where we want to discard the energy, not only on the active position. So definitely a nice inclusion and a disruption deck, maybe like Sylveon. Next up on the list, 
we have ourselves some new play mats and sleeves and deck boxes that are available and the uh, yeah the Pokemon centers around the world so definitely get your hands on them they look really sweet uh, you see Charizard you see Raichu and the sleeves of the Pikachu is uh, something I like even better so definitely get your hands on them you can get them online as well try out eBay or something <laughs> you'll definitely find them okay next up is Wobbuffet also from the Burning Shadow set aka the third set of the Sun and Moon we have the Shadow Knot it has a, an energy cost of three psychic energies, which is something I don't like. So uh, maybe some psychic energy acceleration will be needed, but regardless, it is an awesome attack. This attack does 50 damage for each carless energy and your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. Okay, now I got it out of the way. So the more retreat cost you have, the more damage it deals. So uh, in combination with some cards like Team Aqua Secret Base or maybe Doug Drio from the Sun and Moon set, we can definitely have ourselves a nice little fun deck that can deal a ton of damage. But as I mentioned, we need three Psychic Energy, so yeah, kind of hard to get them on there. The next up, we have Dust Norn, Dust Clubs, and Dust Skull. I uh, will definitely uh, cover all these Sun and Moon Tree cards once they are released in one separate video. But now I want to talk about the uh, Dust Noir. The Dust Noir has an ability, Dark Circle. Once during your turn, you may look at your opponent's hand and put a basic Pokemon you find there onto your opponent's bench. Then you put three damage counters on that Pokemon. Yeah, think about the Gyarados matchup. You see a Magikarp, poof, you put it on the bench and it dies immediately. This is really great and will be seen a lot of play because there's also another stadium coming that I'm gonna uh, feature uh, later in the video so this dust nord does have potential and also has the same attack mind jack as the one from the Zoroark I featured in the deck analysis 30 damage and uh, you deal 30 more for each uh, of your opponent's bench Pokemon so it has a higher base damage but it also needs two attachments a psychic energy and a DCE so uh, let me know what you think about this awesome dust nord deck and uh, yeah since stage twos are here to stay this will definitely be a nice inclusion in a deck that spreads around damage counters next up on the list we have some awesome cards here we have some full arts available to us we have uh, the full art kawi and uh, then there's also the uh, yeah necrozma secret rare so and the ho -Oh full art so uh, i already reviewed these cards before you will definitely find them on the channel so definitely check out the channel and uh, you see that this card uh, these cards are awesome you will definitely want to get yourself the booster box of the burning shadow set once it gets released Next up on my list, what are we gonna talk about here? We have the full art as well of the Guzma. Guzma is basically like a Lysander and a Switch in one, so uh, that's great. When Lysander rotates out, we have Guzma to bring ourselves the targeting position supporter. <laughs> okay, this is a nice full art, talked about it before, but this will be uh, one of the floors I will definitely want to pull out of my booster box once it comes in on the 4th of August. Next up, we have Wiki from the Sun and Moon tree set as well. Uh, each player shuffles their hand into their deck and draws a, a new hand of the same number of cards they had. So, kinda like an N, but yeah, it depends on how many cards you had before you reuse the card. So this is basically something to save yourself, but uh, not your opponent if they have a low hand size. So uh, yeah, kind of a neat combo here. You also see a lot of fan art of this uh, yeah, Pokemon character here. <laughs> Will be neat to have a full art of. So a lot of full art uh, supporters coming to the set as well. Next up is something I want to talk about here. A new Pokemon Core title is coming to the Switch in over a year. So the Switch is the new uh, console of Nintendo. And uh, in E3 they actually showed you a little sneak peek. Actually we did not see anything but they uh, mentioned it. That there is a Pokemon Core title. A main, meaning a main series uh, Pokemon uh, game coming to the Switch. I hope it's something similar like Pokemon Colosseum or XD Gale of Darkness. Because those are one of my favorite games in the entire franchise. And uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Also on a side note, I talked about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon before. Those will come out on the 3DS. So maybe we can get Diamond and Pearl remakes. We'll have to wait and see. But a new game coming, all of, a bunch of new games coming is definitely great for the franchise. Pokemon indeed. Next up, I want to talk about, of course, you weren't waiting for it the entire video. We have Mars Shadow GX. 
the ability Shadow Hunt. This Pokemon can use the attacks of all basic Pokemons and your discard pile. You must have the necessary energies to use it though, so kinda similar like Mew EX, but Mew EX can use uh, the attacks of all Pokemon you have in play, including evolution attacks. This will be a neat tech card because uh, Darkrai GX is uh, suspect suspected to be a really great uh, yeah, deck in the format, and uh, with this little tech uh, card we can get uh, yeah, our Mars Shadow that can use all the attacks of the Pokemon in the discard, so we have ourselves the Fighting type, even though we don't run Fighting Energies, so that is awesome. Bad side is that uh, the, the downside here is that uh, 150 HP is not a lot, will be one shot at most of the time, but also this, this 120 damage, eh, kind of average for two Fighting and a Carlos, and uh, 100 per Fisher's GX deals 50 damage for every number of uh, yeah, basic energies attached to uh, this Marsh, Marsh Shadows GX. So not the best of uh, card in the, the world, but uh, it has uh, potential when there are cards, basic Pokemon coming out, and you want to have yourself a fighting tech in certain decks. Next up, one of my favorites, Malolan Mug GX. It has the chemical press for uh, yeah, darkness and a DCE, so not a bad attachment right here. Uh, deals 10 damage, plus 70 more for each special condition uh, affecting your opponent's active Pokemon. This will be huge with cards like Salazzle or the new Raichu. So uh, think about that. Special conditions will be in the format. So get your poison markers, your burn markers. You're definitely gonna need them. And second attack crunch for two darkness and a DCE deals out flat out 120 damage. And this card's one energy to attach to your opponent's active Pokemon. Not uh, the attack I would use. It also has a GX move for zero energy, so you can basically use that even though you ha don't have any energies in play. Choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and switch it with their active Pokemon. That new active Pokemon is now poisoned, burned and para paralyzed, so that is definitely awesome. Also thinking about special conditions, the new Hypno with, uh, yeah, not the new Hypno, the old Hypno with, uh, yeah, Lullaby Babies will also be seen a lot of play, so a bunch of special conditions with Alolan Muck. I definitely see it being a top deck. Uh, yeah, definitely get your hands on that because uh, it's awesome. But then again, what am I saying? You can definitely tech yourself against this deck with the Comfy of the Guardians Rising set. So uh, maybe you should target the Comfy first. Otherwise, your special condition shenanigans will definitely do nothing. But the Darkness Pokemon, nevertheless, is good. Next up, Kingdra. It only needs one energy for both, both attacks. The first one being Brian. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon with damage counters on it and deal 90 damage to it. So flat out 90 damage, can't complain here. And a tornado shot 90 damage, discard a water energy attached to King Draw, and then you deal 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So a lot of synergy here with the, the choice band and stuff. Uh, we definitely can get something going. Also, one retreat cause is not bad. The weakness to grass uh, kind of kills it because, uh, yeah, a lot of grass being played. Vespaquin, uh, yeah, Tapu Bulu, Lorantis, you name it, the Sidgewai. <laughs> Talking about grass, we have a new Valplume. Look at the ability. It is... Nope, psych, it's no uh, item lock here, it's Bitter Pollen. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's basic Pokemon cannot attack. Okay, I can see something working here with uh, maybe hit and run. Maybe Umbreon uh, GX can slap some damage and then you swap around to Valplume to be your wall. <laughs> but then again, it's a stage 2, so eh. Lucky for us, it's no item locks, but this Valplume, all the Valplumes getting printed nowadays are really good. Next up, Polo, Polo Sand, or whatever you want to call this guy. 80 damage and the defending Pokemon cannot retreat. Second attack, 100 damage. Not a great card indeed. Also, 4 retreat cost. Ugh, get it out of my face. Next up, Mountain Lana Killa, or whatever you're gonna pronounce this. The retreat cost of each player's basic Pokemon gets increased by 1. I can see something working here with the new Wobbuffet I talked about before. So, uh, yeah, definitely some nice stadium cards coming. What else am I gonna talk about here? We have an Electros. Uh, deals 50 damage, the defending Pokemon cannot retreat for a Lightning and a Carlos. And then uh, the uh, Vectrum Volt, 80 damage, you may uh, do an additional 80 damage. If you do, this, uh, this attack does uh, 80 damage to one of your Pokemon. So uh, it may maybe with the Mr. Mime as a wall, we can have something going here. But we'll have to figure it out. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? We have... Uh yeah, Reinforced Fang of the Alolan Radigate. If this Pokemon has a tool card attached, it deals 60 damage instead. <laughs> kind of fun to see. Uh, next up, a Wimpot with an ability. During your first turn, the Pokemon's retreat cost is zero. So definitely a great ability here. Uh, and uh, the Colossopod deck will be a really great, powerful deck. So uh, be careful of this Wimpots. They have free retreat, otherwise they have three retreat costs. So <laughs> kind of uh, interesting here. 
Maybe we should run a spl split line between the uh, Wimpods from the Guardians Rising set and uh, this new Burning Shadow set. Next up, there are actually a ton of cards I want to talk about here. Maybe I should pick the interesting ones first. We have ourselves... Da, 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 da. We're gonna pick ourselves. Yeah, there are uh, some uh, interesting cards you don't want to pull here, which I'm gonna talk about. The Simi Seer, Simi Poor, and Simi Sage are definitely back in the set. Those will be rares that you don't want to pull. <laughs> Next up, Tank Road, Giga Drain, 30 damage. This Pokemon uh, recovers HP uh, equally to the amount of damage you dealt. So not bad indeed, but uh, yeah, for a single Grass Energy. Also, uh, the Cross Whip flip, four coins for each head, dealing 50 damage. With Victini, we have a neat combo. Uh, what else? We have Azumarill with Tick Fat. All the damage done to it by Water and Fire Pokemon, it gets reduced by 30. With an attack, uh, Water and a DCE, 80 damage. And uh, yeah, the last things I want to talk about here is uh, Potown. This is a neat stadium card. Whenever either player plays a Pokemon uh, to evolve their Pokemon, plays three damage counters on that Pokemon. Wow, that is awesome, man. Combine that uh, with maybe Espeon EX or the Sidui GX or Alola Ninetales for that matter. You can snipe around and with that stadium card, it's just so powerful. And uh, as mentioned, there's a lot of secret rares and full arts in the set. The thing, the cards I'm gonna show you right here are proof that the secret rares and full arts are again going through the roof and uh, this is getting, getting kind of out of hand. But uh, yeah, having a secret rare fire energy, uh, super scoop up also back in the format. And a secret rare escape rope for, uh, yeah, crying out loud, that is something I really want, escape rope is awesome. And uh, yeah, secret rare fairy energy and then of course Neuvern and stuff. So this uh, Burning Shadow set will be getting released in Japan pretty soon, but this is the Sun and Moon Tree set, will be getting released, released pretty soon. And then, uh, yeah, the English release gets released on the August 4th, which I'll be getting a booster box of. Here you can see some artworks of the products that will show their face. We have a team deck of Lycanroc, Midday Form, and Alolan Ninetales. That Alolan Ninetales cannot be hit by GXs or EXs with this ability, so that team deck already has a great card in there. Also the booster pack arts look really amazing. We have Ho-Oh, Necrozma and stuff, so uh, definitely looking forward to the set. And uh, the Lady Trainer box of Necrozma looks boss, and I want to have some sleeves of that, so I'm definitely going to get a box of that as well. And that's it for another action-packed episode on my channel. It has been half an hour for those of you that stick around. You guys are awesome. You guys what is what make the channel. And uh, yeah, that's it for another video. Uh, definitely let me know what you uh, think about the Poke News I gave and the deck analysis in the comment section below. And destroy the like button as always because you know I always appreciate that and it gives me the motivation to make more and better videos for you guys. And that's it guys, have an awesome day and the rest of the week and I'll be seeing you guys soon with more great Pokemon TCG videos. I'm out, peace.